Hello, this is Ruby from The Useful Journal and I am so excited to share my April journal spreads with you because I've done something a little bit different and a little bit creative and I've changed things around a bit. I am in my Archer and Olive journal and this month I was inspired by a pipe stencil and to dress it up a bit I thought what goes with pipes and for some reason my brain went to rats. Sewer rats, I don't know, but I did cute rats, but yeah, that's what I did. And with the stencil, I have used Distress Inks in either an, a pad or in this bottle stain. And I've used a little brush to fill in my stencils and I've got a mottled finish. The colours I used were speckled egg that was a spray stain i used rusty hinge which was also a spray stain they were in the bottles and then i used in the pad form this is in my um, pink mackerel swatches journal i used frayed burlap oxide pad so they're the three colors i used for that In addition to that stencil, I used these stamps for my lettering and my numbers and also the days of the week. And for those, I again used my brush to brush the ink onto the stamp and then stamp it. Lots of videos showing my process this month, so keep an eye on those. But yeah, really cute little design with my rat. Oh, and I also had to use a white jelly roll pen. Sometimes my ink bled a bit under the stencil and that meant that I had to recreate the lines between the sections and I just used my white jelly roll pen. Something I did in the first couple of spreads and then realized later it wasn't a good idea was I spritzed my Distress Ink with water. Normally that is fine. The idea was that Distress Inks then get a mottled kind of finish when you spray it with water. Unfortunately, the paper in the Archer and Olive copes really well with the Distress Inks when you just leave them alone, like basically lay them down and leave them doesn't cope so well once you spray water on. You do get your kind of mottled finish, but you also start to get bleeding. So I don't recommend spraying water on your Distress Inks like you can on mixed media paper. But otherwise, the Distress Inks were absolutely fine. I used watercolour for my rats. with a Pigma Micron Pen outline. And uh, I used a Ranger Archival Ink Black pad to do the day of the week stamps. And then this month I am writing with a fountain pen, my Pilot Metropolitan, and this is a fine nib. And I have filled that this month with, I'll go to my ink samples. I am using Cafe Crema from Robert Oster Inks. So that is the ink I'm using in this pen. So that's all the materials I've used this month. And I am so excited to go back to weekly layouts. Uh, monthly was always a bit crammed. I don't mind it, but it was just a bit crammed and I like to have it more spread out. So I did weeklies this month and I love my weeklies. I've got 
basically the same types of elements in each layout but I've got a new little rat watercolour in each one. So here's a rat hanging off a pipe, week three, and in week four I've got a really big fat rat who doesn't have a tail, so it must be tucked behind him. I never really thought about the fact he doesn't have a tail, and now I'm thinking I should add it. <laughs> uh, and then just the last two days are at the top of this page. I'm doing job applications at the moment. And then the pipe just ends with a rat hanging off the end for my sleep tracker. The sleep tracker is nothing new. I forgot to add, I am also using a sponge applicator and distress ink to mark the edges of my pages. And I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. I've got my drinking liquids tracker and another rat in a cavity in the pipe system and my mood tracker. Now I did post about this on one of the journaling Facebook pages because I couldn't believe what I did. I was in the zone and the mood tracker was my very last spread and I was in the zone doing this kind of thing, right? So I put my stencil down and just started colouring and then I took it off and went, oh dear. I had specifically chosen this particular section or collection of pipe sections because it's multiple pieces joined together. And I was going to just do an outline and then colour it in with my mood. And there was just going to be a colour for each mood. So... I had a few ideas and I put them on Facebook and mainly people said, look, let's just use a pattern instead so that at least I get to retain the colouring. The other options were maybe look, covering over the whole thing and doing it again uh, or just doing the symbols. So if I had a good day, do a smiley face on that section and a sad face on a sad day. Uh, I think this will work. It's just not as clear as a colour would have been. But So I've managed to retrieve it a little bit, but yeah, it's not what I originally intended. Then my activity tracker, and I'm really trying to push myself a bit more by actually having some targets uh, for four different things, including walking the dog, stretching, exercising and walking. And then gratitude. Now I have a mental health journal, but I have found that I am not as likely to pick up my mental health journal on a daily basis. And I want to get back into doing graduate gratitude regularly. This doesn't have 30 boxes on it. It's like 22 or 24 or something. And that's fine because I just, I don't do it every day, but it's most days. So this is my gratitude tracker. I'm going to try and write something most days. And then I just get into my dailies, which I've kept pretty simple this time. If you've been watching my Plan With Me's for a while, you'll know that I normally have stickers on my daily entries. And I didn't want to mess with my theme and I didn't have stickers that kind of went with this theme. So I just continue doing pipe sections and the same day stamps that I had on my weeklies. So exactly the same setup, even with a bit of grit stamp. And yeah, that's my daily entry. So that's where I'll do my journaling. I love when the month has 30 days because I normally would do five days per double spread. This month I'm doing six days per double spread and the reason for that is that I do have these weeklies so I'm not having to look think about my tasks and my events and things in my dailies so I've done the dailies a bit shorter. It's quite a lot of pages for a month uh, but it's not far off. It's probably similar to what I do normally. And what you'll notice when I do this is that all the pages have green edges. If you looked at my March journal, you would have seen all the page edges were red or orange, pretty similar colouring. And what I've realised is that when I close my journal, 
I can see that month really easily because the edges of the pages have been colored. So not only do I get a nice colorful border to my pages, and then this was last month, I also get a marker. So uh, that's a really cool little, oh, that was a spill. That's a really cool little side effect of doing my page edges. So I am going to keep doing that for this entire journal so that I get cool page edges all the way through, trying to do a few different colors. So that'll be a bit of a challenge because I'm gonna to have to come up with something for every month that is a different enough color that it separates nicely on the page edges. So that's pretty cool. But I hope you like these spreads. I love them. I'm really enjoying working in them already and I can't wait to keep working in them for the month. I hope you liked my April pages and I will see you next month. Bye.